When I was learning Unity, one thing that I had a hard time understanding was what is the correct way to move objects in my game. Example problem was, why is my on-trigger exit to the event not firing when objects go outside of the bounds of my screen bounds collider? Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Generally, the problem was that I didn't understood that there are two separate systems that allows us to move objects in Unity. We can use transform component to change the position, so basically teleport objects from one position to another using dot position or dot translate to move our objects. But we also have physics system and the rigid body component, and this can be in turn dynamic or kinematic, and there are many ways to move the rigid body. In this video, I want to give you an overview of both of those systems and in the next one on the example we are going to go through the code how to use those two systems to move objects in Unity. As I have mentioned already, transform a component allows us to teleport the object by defining the new position for it or moving it in the specific direction using this dot translate method. And this is exactly what happened in my project. My enemy script used this uh, transform.translate to move the object on the screen. In the project, screen bounds defines a collider which sends on trigger exit whenever something leaves its area. But the enemy object itself has also only a box collider and no rigid body on it, so when it reaches the end of the box collider and when the on trigger exit event should be triggered, it is not because we lack the rigid body component on the enemy object. If we take a look at the documentation for the rigid body 2D in this case, we are going to see that adding a rigid body component to a sprite puts it under control of physics engine. Basically, this means that the sprite will be affected by the gravity and it also allows us to detect the collision between different objects. If we take a look in turn into the documentation of the colliders, at the bottom we are going to see a collision action matrix that defines what types of rigid body will collide with each other and what types of uh, colliders and rigid bodies will send triggers messages to each other. Basically, in a game we can have a static collider, so a, an object with a collider itself, a collider that contains a rigid body that is dynamic, and a kinematic rigid body collider, and also we can set in all of those cases the collider to be a trigger. And we can send the collision message, so this is what uh, physics engine send us, and it reacts to the collisions by pushing objects around. But we can also send triggers and there are much more ways to send triggers between different objects. The basic idea is that this is a tool that you can use to troubleshoot why your collision doesn't occur. In our case we have the static collider, so object which has only a collider and a static collider and doesn't send any collision messages as well as the static collider trigger doesn't send any message to the another static collider trigger. For this we need to have one of those objects to contain a rigid body component. So generally, if something doesn't work in your game in terms of the collisions, be sure to check this collision matrix, I will link it in the description of this video. So going back to the rigid body component, this allows us to interact with the physics engine and we have the dynamic and kinematic rigid bodies in 2D physics and in 3D physics as well. And there are different methods or different ways to move each of those different rigid body. General difference is that the dynamic rigid bodies are affected by the gravity by default and they will uh, get their reaction from other objects that have colliders on them in our game, while kinematic rigid bodies will only get trigger messages that the collision has occurred, but the physics engine will not affect a kinematic rigid body and the gravity will also not be affecting the kinematic rigid body. So basically kinematic rigid body requires us to code everything ourselves what happens in our game. Here is an example project that I have prepared. This character is moved using a dynamic rigid body and the add force method and as you can see I can jump, 
I can fall down but there is a slight acceleration and deacceleration when I'm moving. So this provides us with a very uh, realistic simulation of physics and it is affected by the linear drag or the friction of the terrain and this is not great for the platformer game when we need to have more arcade-ish kind of uh, input and the game feel. This doesn't really work for us. If we take a look at our player, it has a rigid body that is dynamic, the linear drag is zero, but my terrain has a physics material that has friction 0.3, otherwise my character will keep sliding until the end of the platform. And we have the gravity affecting our rigid body, and it has a capsule collider 2D, so that we can detect the collision so it doesn't fall through the platform, and I have this player dynamic force script. Here it is. And at the bottom in the fixed update, I am using rigid body to the add relative force and I'm using a vector uh, called force to add force to my rigid body to move my player depending on the horizontal input, the speed and the fixed delta time. At the end I also clamp the velocity to be the uh, clamp between minus uh, max speed and max speed so it, my character doesn't move too fast because otherwise it will keep on accelerating. Now the second way to move a dynamic rigid body is by setting the velocity ourselves. Now if we take a look at the documentation we are going to see that the value is not usually set directly but rather using forces and this is because velocity allows us to create a semi-realistic or more arcade-ish style of the input and the movement and this is very useful when you're creating something like a platformer game. Back in our test project I have this variant of a player that is the dynamic velocity and we have the rigid body that is also dynamic so nothing changes here, the only thing that changes is the script itself. If we play the game now the movement will be a bit more smooth, we do not have this acceleration deacceleration because our velocity is uh, controlled through our code, so basically we have a bit more arcade-ish styled uh, movement and it is much more suited to this style of a game. Now the script looks exactly the same as before but now rather than setting the force to our rigid body we calculate the velocity vector so basically i'm getting the horizontal input the speed and then fixed delta time i clamp the velocity and i also need to include what is the current y velocity based on if my character is jumping or not and then i simply assign rigid body 2d dot velocity to my vector velocity Okay, so the last type of rigid body is the kinematic that is moved using the move position method. Now here is our project, now I'm using player kinematic movement. Now rigid body is set to be a kinematic rigid body, so we do not have any settings for the gravity. And basically what happens is that uh, our player is directly controlled through our code and we can only get the messages about the trigger collisions. This means that we need to by hand apply the gravity force and we need to by hand detect the collision. Right now I'm not detecting the collision with the head of the player, only I'm checking if we are grounded using a simple ray cast here. So basically this gives us a possibility of creating a very custom movement but the amount of work that is necessary doesn't really make it a very efficient way to create games. Uh, it is much easier to make a rigid body that is dynamic and use that and set the velocity to achieve the desired movement uh, that you want to have to have a good game feel in your game. Now we are going to talk more about the script behind the kinematic movement in the next video but basically what happens is that in the fixed update we need to calculate the, all the forces that affect our movement vector by hand in the script and then use rigid body 2 move position and use current position plus the movement vector times uh, time dot fix delta time to move our uh, rigid body. Basically this method as well as the add force calculates the new velocity that needs to be applied to the rigid body to move the rigid body to the desired position that we set here. Now in case you are looking to create some sort of a rolling stone, you can check out the rigid body 2 d add torque method since this makes the object rotate instead of moving in a specific direction defined by a vector.
Now, going back to our example, what we need to change to make sure that our enemy ships will collide with our screen bounds is to make sure that our enemy has a rigid body that is kinematic, since I do not care if my player collides with an enemy, I only need to subtract one life from my player and also destroy the enemy, so it is all driven by my custom code. But what I want to do is I want to attach the rigid body to the that is kinematic and use it to move my enemy ship, since this way it will collide with the uh, screen bounce and it will destroy them when they go uh, beyond those borders. Okay, just to give you an idea, when do we want to use the transform.translate? For example, if we want to have a moving cloud that moves from one point to another and at some point we may want to uh, remove it from our game, we then want to use transform.translate since we do not want our clouds to collide with anything else in our game, we only want them to move to a specific position and then we may want to, for example, destroy them and respawn them on the other side of the screen. In the next part of the tutorial I will provide a link in the description for you to download this starter project and we are going to go one by one through each of those scripts. If you want to learn more about making 2D games like a platformer or a 2D shooter in Unity, check out my video courses, the link will be in the description. See you in the next video!